India's Tech Mahindra and Japan's Rakuten are demonstrating the power of global collaboration for the global 5G market. And joining me now, I have CP Gunani, who is CEO of Tech Mahindra, and Yoshi Yamada, who is president of Rakuten Mobile Network. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me today. Yoshi, could you tell me more about Rakuten and how it has evolved first into an MVNO and now into a physical network operator? Yeah, so Rakuten started in 1997 as an e-commerce company and uh, we branched out into many verticals, uh, including uh, financial businesses. We are the number one credit card company uh, in Japan and we started the uh, MVNO business uh, about four years ago. But we always felt that, uh, you know, mobile uh, network is such an important part of our lives and we're dependent on, um, you know, MNOs for that, you know, very core of the service. Uh, we just felt that uh, we just uh, needed to do, our, uh, do it ourselves. And we were fortunate enough uh, to get the bandwidth uh, from the government uh, who wanted to, uh, you know, disrupt the market a little bit, right? I mean, because uh, Japan has been dominated by three MNOs. Uh, in a situation called uh, this collaborative oligopoly where they saw uh, not much innovation was happening, uh, maybe the price was a little bit too high. So I think, uh, you know, we're expected a lot, you know, great service at a, at a low price. So, you know, I think we can take on that challenge. So, so this uh, market dynamic you, you mentioned, this is unique to Japan, really. It's, 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 is this, we, do we see this elsewhere in the world or is it... It's, What's happening at the moment? Something's very specific. I think um, you know maybe in other parts of the world uh, there might may be similar situation, but I think Japan was a little bit to the extreme uh, in that uh, you know the other MNOs uh, you know seem to have uh, you know exactly the same kind of a price point uh, and maybe not enough innovation and not just on the network side but also on the uh, uh, customer experience overall. You know I, I, you know there's this notorious uh, two-hour wait whenever you wanted to, uh, you know, sign on. Uh, so, you know, I think we can change that as well. Now, w when you came to, to look at what's required to architect this, this network, what was your primary business objective? Were, were you looking more at, we've got to be as low cost as possible, or we've got to have the highest quality, or the fastest time to market, or is it a, a combination? I mean, you know, Japan is, uh, as you know, a sort of a quality, paranoid country. You know, everyone expects 100%. So I think that's, it's got to be a given. You know, we can't compromise on, uh, on uh, quality. Uh, but also, like, uh, we wanted to bring uh, some sort of innovation, you know, uh, bring in new technology and, uh, you know, completely change user experience. Uh, and at the time of our entrance, we didn't exactly know what, uh, but now we know that uh, you know, we're going to be building our, you know, the world's first cloud-native uh, telco network. So I think that's going to be a, a, a big game changer. CP, if I can uh, bring in the role of Tech Mahindra now, what are you bringing to the project and how did you become involved? So Tech Mahindra started as Mahindra British Telecom about 30 years ago. And about 10 years ago, we also took over an enterprise business from a company called Satyam. And today, Tech Mahindra is 120,000 employees in 90 countries, where about 80,000 of my employees uh, are continuously working with telecom network operators around the world. What we have seen over a period of time is convergence of technologies. And here, when you start looking at the speed, you start looking at the bandwidth that 5G will operate, we strongly believe that the convergence between an enterprise business, whether it is citizen services by the government, whether it is media and entertainment to the consumer, or whether it is e-commerce, or whether it is healthcare, or a wireless manufacturing, I think all of this is going to become a reality. In the world of connected intelligence, 
in the world of connected enterprises, in the world of more importantly a connected consumer, I think 5G has a huge role to play and with our telecom legacy, it just was a definitive step for us to continue to participate not only in 5G, but in connected world and connected solutions. So what are you doing with Rakuten? How is your partnership developing and, and where may this partnership go? Mickey san who is the founder of Rakuten, is known to be a disruptor. When he started in 97, he was the disruptor. When he's decided that in a country like Japan, he will have all his office, which was in Japan, will speak only English, will only con converse in English. Mickey was the disruptor. When Mickey decides that uh, businesses are not driven by networks, networks drive business, Though I might like to differ, I would like to believe that network and business, there is a pure synergy and convergence. But as I said, Mickey San is a disruptor. I think we are looking for a partner. We add definitive solutions and definitive ideas. And uh, with uh, Mickey San and Yoshi San, I think those ideas are coming to a reality that the world's first cloud native network will happen in Japan and will happen because of global collaboration, will happen because Tech Mahindra and Rakuten are working together. And we're working together with a startup in Boston called Altio Star that itself shows you that there is a zeal of missionaries and there is a dream that we're all trying to fulfill. So, so Yoshi, tell me more about the partnership. Tell me more why you, you chose Tech Mahindra to, to work with you. Tech Mahindra uh, uh, helped us build, again, the world first, what we call a Rakuten Cloud Innovation Lab, which is a replica of our commercial network. So uh, it, it, helps, it helps us uh, thoroughly test all the new uh, you know, software functions that we're going to bring into the network. Uh, you know, of course, you know, the test process is completely automated. Uh, and you know, the lab itself is connected to uh, you know, other vendors. So that you know the process, I think, is uh, you know probably takes a fraction of the time that uh, you know the you know, other MNOs might be taking for bringing in new services. So we want to bring uh, new services, disruptive services, at the at the speed of the cloud uh, through this innovation lab. And uh, Tech Mahindra uh, was uh, you know kind of the main you know uh, integrator for this uh, you know uh, innovation. And I th I think and and what. Tech Mahindra, uh, you know, uh, brings to the table is this global perspective. You know, Rakuten is founded in Japan. You know, a lot of our businesses are in Japan, but we really aspire to be a global company, and that is why, as CP just mentioned, uh, you know, we speak in English, uh, and uh, you know, we don't want this uh, uh, mobile. Uh, business to be just in Japan. You know, of course, we've got to get it right in Japan, but we do have global aspirations. And, uh, and uh, Tech Mahindra already has, you know, vast exper experiences uh, uh, outside of India in all major markets. So, you know, we really look to Tech Mahindra for giving us guidance uh, as to, you know, what's happening out there in the world. Because you, this network you're constructing, you're going straight to standalone, you're bringing 5G into the core, you're not operating with, with LTE in parallel? Well, we, we are starting, of course, with 4G, uh, but I think we uh, are going, going into the market at a very fortunate time because we knew that 5G was happening. Uh, so we built a network with 5G in mind, so it is 5G ready. Uh, and because of this cloud architecture, uh, you know, the core network can be upgraded with software upgrade, upgrade uh, to a, a 5G core. So I think we can be one of the first operators uh, to uh, provide a standalone you know, service in 5G. And this will enable you to kind of rapidly look at enterprise markets and new use cases, and new emerging digital use cases. Yeah. We'll be able to provide end-to-end -end network slicing, uh, which is you know, one of the key tenets of 5G. So you know, we're super excited about uh, you know, being able to do that. CP, can I ask you, based on, on your experience, um, what help does this industry need from government and regulators to, to support and maintain growth? Because you know, regulators 
have to develop comprehensive policies, whether it's security, data, spectrum. What, what can be done in this changing world? Because we're disrupting. The world is changing. Telecoms networks are changing. How can the regulators match and support that change? And ultimately, there is no world regulation on the subject. It's a country-specific regulation. Now, so the first part is, let's, I mean, I would like to compliment the Japan government for having a foresight for doing the spectrum allocation far ahead of the rest of the world. Uh, number two, if I were to look at the advantages of 5G rollouts around the world, I think most regulators have to take into account that it's a very capex heavy industry and the earlier era where the ARPUs on voice used to be so high, uh, I think the government is trying to milk the cow. Uh, when they do, I mean, and particularly when you look at the 5G licenses in Italy, I mean, I, I sometimes wonder what the business case would be. Now, at the same time, uh, digital economy by itself always runs two steps ahead of where the government would be. Uh, Uber wouldn't have been born if it were standing in a queue applying for every taxi licenses. And 5G is going to open up a new market completely. The reality is the bandwidth availability is 10x of 4G. Latency is practically down to zero. I mean, we are sitting right now in the FC Barcelona Stadium right here. I mean, think of watching this match and also being instantly being able to replay it from three different angles on AR, VR. That's going to happen right here. So, uh, in this world of, you know, digital world, I can only say is that data localization, safe and secure network, and making sure that the business cases are equally important from the operator point of view and from the consumer point of view is more important than trying to find the spectrum license fee. Great. Well, good words. And I hope um, other operators take heed around the world and, and regulators can, can learn and uh, the industry as a whole can move forward and take advantage of 5G because it looks like the digital economy is something that we, we all need at the moment. For now, thank you both gentlemen, and we look forward to developments and seeing how the, the network evolves and uh, the services you bring to market. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.